Hey everybody, this is Rhett. Welcome to Statistics. In this video, I want to give you an idea of what statistics is all about, and hopefully get you excited about taking a stats class. Let's get started. What exactly is statistics? Well, statistics is all about data. I like to say that it is the art and science of data. Maybe you consider yourself a numbers person. You have a strong background in math, and you enjoy formulas, calculations, and problem solving. Great, there's plenty of opportunity for that in statistics. On the other hand, maybe you prefer the arts. Perhaps you're a writer. You have excellent communication skills or talent for design. Perfect, there's a place for that in statistics too. Anytime you calculate something in statistics, you are going to need to explain the result in the context of some application. That's why I say stats is a combination of art and science. Okay, so in general, statistics is all about data. Let's be a little more specific. What exactly do we do with the data? Well, statistics includes collecting data, maybe by taking a poll or a survey, by conducting an experiment, or by installing illegal wiretaps. Raw data is usually pretty useless. A first step in the right direction is to organize the data. This could be as simple as putting numbers in order from least to greatest, or ordering names alphabetically. You might organize data in a table, chart, or graph. Another option is to summarize the data, maybe by taking an average. Once you have the data organized, you can begin an analysis. What can you learn from the data? Can we make reliable predictions? Is there a trend? Can we prove or disprove a theory? And finally, somebody needs to explain all this to the common folk. Interpreting the results is a very important part of statistics, and for many, the most challenging. We have great technology that can handle complex computations with huge data sets, but somebody still needs to explain the output. All right, so stats is all about data, from collection to interpretation. But we divide the field of statistics into two branches, descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. Descriptive statistics refers to methods for summarizing and organizing the information in a data set. Creating tables, charts, and graphs are part of descriptive statistics. The minimum, maximum, and average summarize data and are also part of descriptive statistics. Inferential statistics consist of methods for estimating and drawing conclusions about a large group based on the information in a smaller, hopefully representative group, called a sample. Most introductory stats classes will cover both descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. I hope that you have a good idea of what statistics is all about, but maybe you're asking, who cares or why bother? Well, here are some good reasons to take a stats class. My top five. Number five, maybe it's a requirement of your major. That's okay. I only ask that you keep an open mind. Give me a chance to convince you of the utility of statistics before the course is through. Number four, maybe it's a bit dramatic to say that it's your civic duty, but statistics is everywhere, in advertising and in the news. Here are a couple of examples. This is an excerpt from a USA Today article. The article contains predictions for the 2016 presidential race. Are these predictions reliable? In this course, we'll learn about sample size, margin of error, and the reliability of predictions. Did you ever wonder how all car insurance companies manage to advertise that people who switch to our company save an average of a large amount of money? It's because the sample population, people who switch, is almost entirely composed of people who are going to save a big chunk of money by doing so, or else why would they bother to switch? 
Since no record is kept of the percentage of people who would not save any money and therefore don't switch, the cited statistic has almost no meaning. In 1998, the medical journal The Lancet published a fraudulent research paper that lent support to the subsequently discredited theory that colitis and autism spectrum disorders could be caused by the combined measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine. Reviews of the evidence by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the American Academy of Pediatrics, the Institute of Medicine of the U.S. National Academy of Sciences, the U.K. National Health Service, and the Cochrane Library all found no link between the vaccine and autism. And finally, you should know that 79.48% of all statistics are made up on the spot. A rudimentary understanding of statistics will allow you to thoughtfully consider and maybe question or challenge statistics that are reported as facts. And number three, I'm not going to promise that regardless of profession that everyone will use every technique that is covered in a stats course. However, many of the topics that we cover in an introductory stats class are very practical and have broad application. For example, constructing a bar graph or calculating an average. And number two, some of you are in a stats class because of reason number five and are interested in careers that rely on research or analysis such as psychology or finance. In that case, then many or most of the topics that are covered in an introductory stats class are going to be of use to you in your professional career. And drumroll please, my number one reason for taking a stats class? You may really enjoy it, and if so, there are some great career options which require a strong statistics background, such as actuary or financial analyst, and these positions are lucrative and rewarding. Maybe you're still not sure of what statistics is all about, or maybe you're not yet convinced of the need to take a stats class. Okay, so I'm going to try one last thing. I'm going to walk you through an application of statistics from start to finish in a story that I call, I Had a Cream. We'll discuss each part of statistics, collecting, organizing, analyzing and interpreting data, and we'll use both descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. Here goes. Someone once told me that if you have something sweet, like a piece of candy, before taking an exam, that you will do better. I wanted to test this theory. So at the end of a semester, as I handed out final exams, I asked each student to flip a coin. If the coin toss revealed heads, then I gave the student a Krispy Kreme donut along with their final exam. If, on the other hand, the coin toss revealed tails, then no donut, just an exam and a smile. So let's take a look at the data and see if there's any indication that the donuts provide an edge. Here's the raw data. What do you think? The raw data is not very useful. In fact, I would say not useful at all. We need to move on to the next part of statistics, organizing data. Here I've organized the data in a spreadsheet. I have two pieces of information from each student, their test grade and whether they were given a donut or not. A 1 indicates that the student was given a donut and a 2 indicates no donut. You can see that I have separated ones from twos. But it would still be hard to say if the donuts gave the ones an advantage. So let's keep going. It would be nice to know how many students were given a donut and how many were not. So I've organized the data in a table. Another option is a chart, in this case a pie chart. Now I know that 48% of students received a donut. But we still can't say whether the donuts make a difference. Here's another table. The tables, charts, and summaries are all descriptive statistics, by the way. In the second table, not only are the students separated according to whether or not they received a Krispy Kreme, but I have also averaged test grades for both groups. On average, the Krispy Kremers did better. Their average 
was over 104, while the no-donut group average is just over 90 points. But is that a significant difference? To answer this question, we need some more advanced statistical analysis tools, in particular what is called a t-test. But don't worry about the details of the analysis for now. I'm going to ask you to take my word for it. The average for the Krispy Kreme students is significantly higher than the average for the no creamers. That brings us to the interpretation. In plain English, what did we learn? Eat a donut before you take your final. And because I'm using the results from a small group of students to draw conclusions about all students, this is an example of inferential statistics. So, I hope that you have an idea of what STATS is all about. Statistics is the art and science of data and includes collecting, organizing, analyzing, and interpreting data. And there are two branches, descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. I hope that you've enjoyed the video, but more importantly, I hope you're excited about your STATS class. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Until next time, stay real and be rational.